Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we've got several broadcasts going to be coming out today. Uh, some of those may be over on Fact News Network, so just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we may be covering the uh, meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and that of President Trump on the revealing of the peace uh, plan that is coming out. All the information will be covering that over on Fact News Network. Right now, though, we're going to be looking at here some breaking stories that are coming out. Uh, U.S. Russian forces skirmishes in northeastern Syria. We're also going to be taking a look at the downed uh, U.S. plane, no doubt a spy plane there in Afghanistan there, uh, that was taking down TASS News Agency. Also, RT also reporting about the downed plane there. Uh, from what we have gathered with our own source there, if there are any survivors, they were taken captive by the Taliban uh, who did, who was there on the ground uh, when this plane was taken down. The, there are reports the Taliban has taken, uh, taken responsibility for shooting this plane down. Uh, it is believed to be a spy plane used by the U.S. Air Force and uh, that it was actually uh, shot down. Uh, there are alleged CIA operatives that were working on board the plane. We don't know really the, the full scoop on that part there. Uh, also be looking into Syria uh, right now. The Syrian forces are taking Idlib by storm. The uh, Turkish uh, uh, government also setting up makeshift camps for the people that are fleeing uh, as the Syrian army takes back Idlib. But the top of our story that we're looking at right now Oh, that's actually going to be in our Israeli news. I'll go ahead and just bring that up since we have it up here on here now. Israeli national convicted in Russia of drug trafficking partially admits the guilt. That's the woman there in the picture there. I was going to save that for the uh, news that we're covering on Israel right there. Uh, but uh, she claims it's for uh, personal use. She's trying to smuggle hashish out of Russia. Uh, she's been caught more than once before. I think it was about a year ago that happened with her as well. But that's not, I didn't mean to click on that one there. Uh, anyway, U.S.-Russian forces skirmishes in northeastern Syria. This is becoming a tit-for-tat type of situation. U.S. forces present, present in areas controlled by Kurdish militants in northeast Syria have clashed with Russian troops amid accusation that Washington is stealing Syria's oil. The confrontation took place uh, at the entrance of Tal uh, Tamar in Syria's northeastern province of uh, Hasaka, and the strategic town lies on a highway to the region's key oil fields. The following confrontation, Russia and American vehicles headed into two different, uh, following the confrontations, I should say, Russian and American vehicles headed into two, two different directions. The Moscow Times reported the standoff was followed by Russian helicopters and U.S. warplanes flying over Tal Tamar. Uh, it added, Russia has been helping Syria, and further, we don't have to go into that issue there. Uh, but this is an ongoing issue, and continually uh, between the U.S. and Russian forces in Syria as each one of them flex their muscle over who's going to control this territory. Uh, the skirmishes took place amid an ongoing dispute between the U.S. and Russian over uh, Rumlayan oil field, which lies in Hasaka. And the latest development comes as the U.S. has dispatched new deployments to the Syrian province uh, of Hasaka and De uh, Deir al zawar over the past weeks there. So we can imagine that that's not going to really settle down anytime soon there. And of course, uh, according to the Mem uh, Middle Eastern Monitor there, the Syrian regime has reportedly captured 10 towns and villages in less than two days in the embattled province of Idlib and northwest of the country, marking its most rapid advance in its campaign to recapture the last major opposition stronghold. The troops' mil uh, militias belonging to uh, the Syrian uh, President Bashar al-Assad made the progress after gaining control of the M5 highway connecting the key cities of Damascus and Aleppo over the weekend. Now, if you'll notice, the Middle East monitor there calling President Bashar al-Assad a dictator. So it lets you know right, right straight up, uh, right off the bat there, that uh, uh, these guys here clearly are pro-Western media. It's interesting how they call it, Middle East monitor, and then they call Bashar al-Assad a dictator. Now, they can say that about a lot of other leaders around the world. This is a big issue right now at heart, though, is the downing of the American plane in Afghanistan. Of course, we know the Afghans have been, uh, the Taliban has been fighting the U.S. presence for a long time there. The U.S. also there. 
Uh, Russia has tried to take uh, Afghanistan before they failed in doing so. The U.S. at one time backed the Afghan uh, uh, Taliban, only later to turn against them. And now we have a U.S. plane that was uh, downed in that area. It says here, uh, this is according to TASS, the Russian news agency there, uh, that uh, a plane that crashed in Afghanistan on Monday might belong to the U.S. Air Force. Well, it seems to be pretty obvious if you uh, look at this uh, particular video right here that shot locally on the ground, uh, posted by uh, uh, Tojo News uh, from Afghanistan there. Uh, once they go to the tail section, it does say U.S. Air Force. Uh, I looked at the specs on this plane um, Allegedly, from what we are understanding, there were uh, eight passengers, including the, uh, uh, the, the pilot that were on the plane. Allegedly, they were all killed. Uh, the source that I do have uh, su suggests that possibly that um, there may have been more on the plane than what is uh, be being reported. And when you look at the specs on the plane, they say that the plane could carry up to 19 passengers. Uh, but what we found interesting is, is that that's on a commercial, or excuse me, that is on a private uh, jet. It seats 19. Uh, some of the photos that we've looked at suggest that there could have been uh, more seats because it does seem to be laid out a little bit differently there. So we're not really sure exactly uh, exactly what we're looking at in this case right here. Um, so we're going to kind of wait till we get a little bit more clarification on there. It says there may have been up to 15 people on board according to some reports. As it says here, eyewitnesses on the incident informed that local residents had pulled out a body of the pilot from the plane who was foreign. Uh, there's also suggestions too that those that were uh, operating the plane, even though it was a U.S. plane, were that of uh, not Americans, but foreigners. Uh, so we really just don't know the answer to this as of yet. So we'll kind of try to follow this a little bit more, uh, see where we go at there on that. And uh, this is where RT is talking about it. Uh, RT is saying that plane crash carrying high-ranking U.S. officers crashes in Afghanistan. That's what the um, RT is reporting about that, and they're the ones that, I, as I mentioned earlier, the CIA says that so far unverified claims include suggestions that officers belong to the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency was on the plane as of uh, as 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 well. Um, also, yesterday we reported to you that in Baghdad, Iraq, the U.S. Embassy came under attack, as under mortar attack. Three mortar shells crashed into the Baghdad's U.S. Embassy compound. According to the Washington Post, they said wounding one. We had reports, casualties, five casualties, or five wounded was actually to be more specific uh, in that particular attack. People were saying at the time we first reported it, there was no mention whatsoever of any types of injuries or anything. So the Washington Post finally coming out, uh, they were saying it. In fact, uh, if you go back and look at some of the sources there, uh, we have when we actually did it like that U.S. Embassy strike bad Baghdad, um, we begin to get more more stories coming out admitting that at least one wounded, and I think RT had also reported that as well. Uh, let's see here if anybody's done any updates on that. But we were getting reports. We just reported casualties uh, as we went back and looked at our information because we were traveling last night. Uh, we were seeing that they had listed five injured as far as those casualties there. Uh, and uh, as of right now, only the Washington Post, as far as I can see, uh, speaking about uh, the number of injured in there. And, but that's not unusual uh, for the U.S., even if it is true that there's more injured to downplay that. When you're dealing with war, you don't want the enemy to know uh, that, um, that there is any, uh, anything different from that. Uh, also, I want to show this one here. The Moscow Times, uh, it's mainly the title of the article, Putin Puts Russia Incorporator Under New Management. Just thought that's kind of interesting because, you know, they say that about the United States, that the United States is a corporation. It's not really what you think it is. Well, now Russia 
is incorporated as well. That definitely tells you we're moving to a, towards a new world order far more rapid than you could ever possibly imagine. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to tune into Fact News Network as we cover the issue going on with Prime Minister Netanyahu and other uh, stories related to that. Uh, meeting in Washington, D.C. This is also the day of Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, and there's always a lot of interesting things on that, so I'm sure you'll be catching those as well. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov, and don't forget the conference February the 8th. Uh, don't forget to sign up for that as well.